Good morning. This is Dr. Matt Springer from the Department of Forestry and Natural Resources here at the University of Kentucky. And I am here today for our Snake ID of the Week Challenge. As always, I want to highlight our Snake ID website uh, found at kysnakes.ca.uky.edu. Uh, it's a great resource if you ever have a snake that you're not sure what it is. Um, we have several functions and lots of pictures to help you ID it. Now let's get into our challenge picture of the week. This is submitted last week, and then um, the reason I chose it is actually because it's, it's not one that uh, I have submitted very often at all. This is honestly the second time I've seen it um, in four years. Uh, so it's a, it's a relatively uncommon snake that folks come across. Uh, not that it's uncommon in the state, uh, it's certainly less abundant than things like water snake species uh, or our, our rat snakes, but it's one that's not you know, threatened or endangered. Now, let's start off with trying to ID this species. First and foremost, we look at the pattern uh, on the snake and we don't see any kind of uh, pattern present on the actual body of the animal. Uh, for the most part, we have a uh, head color uh, that is a little darker than the tan body. Uh, but let's try to you know, figure out if this is a venomous or a non-venomous species and focus on the head. Um, and we see that this is a, a relatively slender head. The snake itself is relatively slender. Uh, by the size of um, the grass that it's in, you know, we don't have a lot of scale here, but it looks to be a smaller snake. Um, we don't have a great look at the eyes, so we can't see that pupil shape. Um, we, but we really don't see any kind of triangular head. It's really a slender head, slender body. So this would point more towards a non-venomous species. Lack of pattern uh, on the body and the, the head color uh, being darker than the tan body. If we put that in and start looking at the pictures present within our website, we have a couple options that pop up, two of which here uh, are fairly similar. Um, the top one is actually a really slender snake um, that is, you know, not um, overly uh, small as, as the species that we're trying to ID. Uh, it's a couple feet in length, but it's a very s slender body. Uh, the other sn snake on the bottom here um, is a much larger snake. Uh, it gets upwards of five feet in length. So um, the the big thing here is we have two other options that are potential that meet our, our color um, similarity with the species that we're trying to ID. Uh, however, um, don't quite fit. And that, the top picture there is an Easter coach whip, a really rare snake. And the bottom one there is actually a pine snake, which is that larger species, uh, which may or may not actually be present in the state. It's only been found in um, a cert one certain locality. Um, and we're not sure if it actually was present there because of being released as a, a pet uh, snake. But the last option that's present, if you look at the, the website, uh, is this, and this is our correct answer. It's the red-bellied snake. Um, and unfortunately, with a picture that we had there, it didn't really show off the actual feature that it's most known for, which is a strikingly bright red belly. Um, we had a very brown top side, and, and this snake um, actually has a slightly different color variation that's uh, observed, which is a much grayer um, coloration into its body, but the head is almost always darker than the body, as you see, uh, even in the gray uh, phase, uh, and that belly just sticks through. Another feature that's a good identifying factor is actually the, the partial ring around the neck behind the head uh, is white. It's incomplete, but it's a series of white blotches that kind of gives a ring-esque look. Uh, and then below both eyes is a white dot that is actually a, a distinguishing feature for the species. Now these guys are only about eight to 10 to 12 inches in length. So they're really small. Um, they are an actor similar to the hawknose snake. They'll play dead, they'll put on a show, they'll flatten themselves out all in defense, but rarely actually do bite. And even if they do, they are a non venomous species. I'm going to finish up here on uh, our snakes in general, like I always do. Make sure you are positively identifying a snake that uh, is in front of you uh, so that you know whether or not you need to avoid it. You know, at very easily in Kentucky, you can get to venomous or non-venomous by using the head shape, pupils, and patterns. If you want to reduce the possibility of running into snakes, um, reduce shrubby areas around your house or garden. Keep your grass mowed short. 
keep those wood piles, rock piles away from your house and off into a place that uh, you don't run into very often. Remember, there's lots of positive benefits to having snakes around your landscape. Keeps those rodent populations in check, helps, helps to reduce tick uh, and Lyme disease loads in the landscape and ecosystems. If you have any questions, we have the wonderful UK snake website as a resource found once again at kysnakes.ca.uky.edu. Have a wonderful rest of your day.